a wild tryst with a woman leaves fashion designer Tommy Silver, exhausted. She leaves her CD with him and tells him to call her agency before leaving. Moments later, he opens his eyes, only to get shot to death. Meanwhile, an irate girl named Daisy is on her way to deliver a message to the Smith & Doyle office when she sees someone coming out of Tommy's workplace. She asks that person for directions, but she gets ignored, leaving her even more annoyed. In the morning, Rayanne Whitfield gets home from Dallas and answers the phone call meant for her husband Jack, who's plastered on the couch. As he gets the phone from her, he learns from his colleague, Mylon, what happened to Tommy Silver. And since his car won't start, Rayanne has to take him to Silver Fashion. On the way there, he slyly makes it clear that he isn't pleased with her being away. But unfortunately, she isn't done with whatever she's doing yet, leaving him disappointed but not surprised. He tries to make conversation with her, asking what Silver Fashion is, but Rayanne's completely distracted. When she finally notices him talking, and asks to repeat what he said, he only tells her he's glad she's home, to which she answers, I love you too. Once they reach their destination, Jack kisses his wife goodbye, and immediately heads to Tommy's office, even offering his lighter to an irritated woman who's trying to get past a cop. Jack's something of a mess, and everyone knows it. When a guy comments that he's late, he only fires back saying that the guy's ugly, and they're both screwed. Now what? His superiors, Mylon and Tonelli, are talking about how the victim's wife, Krista, said her husband had a watch, a wedding ring, and a wallet. Since none of them were found on Tommy's body or anywhere in his office, Mylon thinks they have a case of robbery shooting. According to forensics, Tommy slept with someone before he was killed, but Krista said the last time she saw him was lunch yesterday. While Jack is drawing Tommy, Tonelli asks him to get back to the police station right away to talk to their witness and make a sketch of the suspect. Moments later, Jack meets the messenger and the only witness in the case, Daisy. He accommodates her charmingly enough, and for the next few minutes, she describes the woman she saw. The more she goes on though, the more troubled he looks. It comes to a point where he's supplying the descriptions, and aboard Daisy's confirming he's correct. He gets annoyed at anyone rushing him and snaps at them. Meanwhile, Krista Silver arrives at the police station and shares with Tonelli that Tommy was comfortable being in an open relationship. Back at his workstation, Jack's finally done with his sketch, but the result is worrying. It looks exactly like Rayanne. Before Daisy leaves, he nervously reminds her to call him if she remembers any other details about the suspect. He also hides his original sketch before working on a new one. On the other hand, Tonelli lets Krista know they finally got through to Paul Corbel in New York for her, and that he's on a plane right now. When he asks what the guy's relationship was with Tommy, she explains that Paul manages silver fashion. This is where Jack arrives to give Tonelli his new sketch, which shows an entirely different woman. Krista doesn't know who that is, since she has nothing to do with Tommy's business. To put it simply, she had little association with her husband's acquaintances. Tommy also liked hiring escorts to accompany him. And that's something he told Krista himself, the more expensive the better. With that, Tonelli makes someone distribute copies of the sketch to all the blue suits. In the afternoon, Jack calls Rayanne in her office. He wants to talk to her, to really talk to her, but all he manages is saying he misses her. Since she's busy working, she ends the call. The whole thing has him feeling lost, so he tracks Daisy down and asks her to describe the suspect's clothing. Despite her annoyance, she answers she was wearing a dark skirt and a bright orange blouse. At home, Jack asks Rayanne if she's bought new clothes for herself and says he thought he saw an orange blouse. However, his wife says no. She didn't shop. But she should. She doesn't like any of her clothes anymore. With that, she goes straight to bed, and a disgruntled Jack heads to the living room, where he calls Daisy and asks her to meet him to talk about his sketch. After 20 minutes, he reaches the messenger's place, where a man gets mad at him for knocking on the door so loudly. But even after several knocks, Daisy doesn't answer, so Jack leaves. The next day, Mylon informs his colleagues that another DNA sample was found on Tommy's sheets. In the lobby, a solemn Paul Corbel finally arrives and follows Jack to Tonelli's office. While Jack signs some documents, Tonelli shows Paul the sketch of the suspect and asks if he's seen that woman before. Much to Jack's surprise, Paul thinks she's someone who's done photography work for their company. Still, he wants to check with some of their art directors because he doesn't remember the woman's name. Afterward, Jack asks Mylon who the woman in the sketch is, but he isn't sure since the person Paul wants to talk to about her is still in New York. Right now, Mylon needs to go to Silver Fashion to pick up some employment records, but he wants to grab a couple of beers with Jack after. At the pub, Jack gets all in his feelings. He tells Mylon he wishes Rayanne was around a little more. Alas, Mylon knows that she won't quit her job, especially since she has high standards. He also reminds Jack that he used to have high standards too. Sadly, Jack feels like he's losing his wife, they're just drifting apart. Jack is always desperate to talk to Rayanne whenever she's away, but when they're together, he doesn't know what to say. They don't talk about their relationship, and he believes that Rayanne knows they're drifting apart too. What hurts Jack even more, is that his wife doesn't even care because she's obsessed with her little world. For Mylon, Jack needs to go home and let it all out. Otherwise, that thing is just gonna mess him up. Officially, the current suspect is the photographer Paul will identify. But to Jack, 
the suspect is his very wife, not just for the death of Tommy, but for the slow demise of their relationship as well. And in both cases, Jack has become a potential accomplice by manipulating the sketch, keeping eyes off her, and by keeping quiet and letting everything fall apart. He doesn't ask her about the sketch the same reason he can't bring himself to really talk to her, because doing so may just create problems when there could be none, and it requires him to confront the fact that everything they have may be a lie. Did he ever actually know Rayanne? If he did, how could he be sleeping beside a killer? How could he have drifted so far from her and be left behind? As Mylon said, Jack used to have standards. Then again, there's a possibility that Rayanne isn't the woman Daisy saw. The more time they spent with the sketch, the more his suggestions of how the suspect looked like became closer and closer to Rayanne's features. And while Daisy confirmed most of his suggestions, she may have been influenced by Jack's words, which could affect how she remembers the woman. After all, she only saw her face for a matter of seconds. Knowing how hung up he is on Rayanne, Jack could just be seeing her everywhere too. As for Rayanne, she has the alibi of being in Dallas on the night of Tommy's murder, and she showed no outward reaction to Jack taking up the case, but she was very distracted when she was driving him, and he was trying to ask what silver fashion is. Now as for other possible suspects, it's unlikely for the escort he slept with to have done it, because her DNA would be all over the place, thus incriminating her. But there is his wife Krista, who could have resented him over his promiscuity in the face of their marriage, however open it may be, and his business manager, Paul. When it comes to business, the motives are endless. With Mylon's advice in mind, Jack quickly goes home, where he finds Rayanne's friends having a little party. One of her colleagues asks him if, gun to his head, he's made to choose among a batch of designs he's holding up for his office, what's Jack gonna do? To that, he answers that he'd tell him to shoot before finding his wife in their room. She tried calling him earlier, apparently, but they're celebrating because their company pulled back their deadline. When Jack asks about one of the guys that Rayanne invited over, his wife jokes that he's her 11th boyfriend that month, which he isn't happy about. He also makes it clear that he isn't happy having other people over, and that he wants to talk to her, but she stresses that it's a nice change for them to have some visitors for once. Refusing to argue, Jack clarifies he only wants to talk about their relationship. But Rayanne is already annoyed, retorting that he's only ever concerned about what he wants. Finally, he asks her what she wants, which annoys her even more because of all the times to ask her a deep question, he did it when they have people over. In any case, what she wants is to party and laugh. Defeated, Jack relents, and Rayanne tells him to change. His clothes, she means. The following day, the police station actually found their suspect. Tonelli lauds Jack because she looks like his sketch, and just like Paul said, she's a photographer who's doing a layout for silver fashion. Also, Tommy personally hired her. Wasting no time, Tonelli and Mylon immediately interview Jane and let her know they have a witness who saw her leaving Silver Fashion the night Tommy was killed. Without hesitation, Jane claims she was working at her apartment at that time, but there's no one to vouch for her. Jane asserts Tommy hired her when he saw her work, but she only met him once. More importantly, she never slept with the guy. To prove this, Tonelli and Mylon ask if she's willing to provide them with a DNA sample, specifically hair from her pubis. Later, Jack goes to the interrogation room to talk to Jane. She's extremely defeated and refuses to speak with anyone except for her lawyer. Still, Jack asks if charges have already been brought against her. When she says no, he states the cops can't hold her. Looking at the sketch artist, she wonders where she's seen him. Jack isn't sure if their paths have crossed before, but all he wants is for Jane to know that if there are no charges filed against her, she can't be detained. Of course, he also advises her to give his superiors the DNA sample they need, because they'll just obtain a court order to get it anyway. That same day, a pissed Jack leaves his car at the automobile repair shop before learning from Mylon that Rayanne, who's been with a company called CMC for three and a half years, had major billings with Silver Fashion on the summer of 90 through spring of 91. Naturally, Mylon is curious if Rayanne ever got to meet Tommy. Instead of going home, Jack heads to Rayanne's office and asks if she worked with Silver Fashion. She confirms this, and he's disappointed she never brought it up. In Rayanne's defense, he never asked. She knew Tommy though, and she shares that he had very specific ideas about what he wanted. Changing the subject, Jack asks her to have lunch with him, but her colleague Todd, who was also their guest the other day, reminds her they need to get back to work. With no other choice, Jack just kisses Rayanne goodbye and goes to Silver Fashion, telling one of his co-workers that Tonelli wants him to finish the floor plan. Once he's alone, Jack finds a small piece of paper inside a book showing a phone number, and decides to take it. He takes one of the CDs too, and when Mylon arrives, he tells the man he's done working on the floor plan. No one told Mylon that he'd be there, so Jack just lies, and says he forgot to get it cleared. Their conversation is only interrupted when Mylon receives a call from Tonelli, who wants to know where Jack is, and informs him they got a corpse over in the LA River. On their way to the car, Jack's annoyed again since Tonelli got mad after learning he's at Silver Fashion. Well, everyone keeps yapping at him to do his job, but when he does it, they're still pissed at him. The two then head to the LA River, and surprisingly, they find Daisy's dead body there. Inside the car, a perturbed Jack sees the earring that the authorities found in Tommy's suite. As they return to the police station, 
Jack tells one of his colleagues that he's going home early, but the woman says he's needed there because they got a new witness, so Jack just returns inside to see who that person is. To his shock, it's none other than Daisy's neighbor, who got mad at him for being noisy. To clarify things, Mylon interviews Jack and learns he went to Daisy's apartment because he was rushed on the drawing. He also adds he wanted to help Daisy remember more details about their suspect, but at the same time, he can't help but be angry that he's being questioned for doing his job. At home, Jack goes through Rayanne's jewelry drawers. He's lost. He has no idea what to make of anything. When he doesn't find what he's looking for, he simply waits for his wife to come home and asks if she's had a long day with Todd. Not wanting to argue with him, she just goes to their bedroom, only to return a few moments later when she sees what Jack did to her stuff. Without looking at Rayanne, Jack asks where she put the earrings that he bought her. As she claims to have lost them, he demands to know when and where. But at that point, he doesn't believe her answers. He follows her to the bedroom and asks why she never told him she worked for Tommy, despite knowing the guy was killed. Well, he resents her work. Why would she talk to him about it? The more they talk, the more Jack unravels. He's falling apart before his wife, and eventually, he admits that he knows she was present the night Tommy was killed before giving her his original sketch, which shows her face. At first, Rayanne doesn't say anything, but she quickly reminds her husband that she was in Dallas at that time, implying that he's going crazy. However, Jack reveals that their witness described her to him, and he drew her face. Now, that witness is dead. To her though, he didn't draw who the witness described, he drew her, just as he's done a hundred times before. Still, Jack is broken up, and on the verge of tears. Just tell me what's going on. If you just explain it, I'll understand. Just tell me what happened, he pleads, spurring Rayanne to hold him close. He has to believe her, she says, and she apologizes for not knowing he was under so much stress. She holds her husband tenderly, and as she comforts him, they spend the night making love. All this time, Jack and Rayanne had been hiding behind Entendre and Pretense. Rayanne saying she doesn't like her old clothes anymore, and she should get new ones. Her telling Jack he should change. Jack telling her co-workers to just shoot him. But now, Jack's finally let his feelings spill. It's not Tommy's death that he wants to understand, but what happened to their marriage. Like he said, he'll understand if she'd just explain. That's why Jack's been throwing himself into the case, hijacking the investigations, even though he has no real authority to help with them. After all, he's just a sketch artist, one who kept showing up late to the job. But to him, diving into this case isn't just about proving his wife's innocence. It may also be about getting closer to her, actually knowing something about her since she's drifting so far apart from him. He just wants to understand her. And though they finally fell into lovemaking, this doesn't answer the million dollar question, did Rayanne do it? Like she said, Jack could have simply fallen into the trap of drawing her as he's already done countless of times, and he's clearly stressed. He's desperate to have any kind of connection with her. But what about the earrings? Her not telling him about her association with Tommy Silver, especially when he was already asking about the company when she was driving him. One thing Rayanne's clear from, though, is killing Daisy. If the girl died the night Jack went to her apartment, she couldn't have done it because she was already asleep, and he would have noticed her leaving. In the morning, Jack calls the number he found at Silver Fashion. It belongs to the woman Tommy slept with before he was killed. Unfortunately, the lady isn't home, but her recorded message lets her caller know they can reach her through the escort agency. A few minutes later, Mylon shows up and tells Jack that Tonelli wants to see him. In truth, he's there to take him in, and Jack should just be thankful because Tonelli initially planned to send a blue suit to do the job. Luckily, Mylon was able to convince the man to let him do it instead. They also got Daisy's autopsy report and learned that the same weapon used on her was used on Tommy. When Tonelli heard that Daisy's neighbor ID'd Jack, he was through the roof. Infuriated, Jack points out that Daisy's neighbor just saw him knock on the door, he never even got in that place. But Mylon talked to Daisy's dispatcher, and that's how they discovered that Jack met the lady while she was at work. They also found skin samples from a man and blood under Daisy's fingernails, and the photographer was released. As much as he hates to say it, Mylon tells Jack they got his blood type from his employment record, and it matched the blood found under Daisy's nails. Coincidentally, he also has scratch marks on his back, because of the previous night. Oh great. For Jack, it's not a big deal since he's not the only sucker with that blood type in their filthy city. He's very irate though, and in the end, Mylon gives him some time to figure things out while Jack storms off. He comes back just seconds later though, because, well, he needs a ride. Mylon takes him to his destination, and before they part ways, Jack gives Mylon the number he found at Silver Fashion and asks him to run a reverse directory on it. Once Mylon is gone, Jack knocks on Jane's apartment. The woman isn't happy to see him, but she eventually lets him inside when he shares he's the sketch artist who drew her. As they sit, Jack offers Jane a lighter, but it doesn't work. This is where Jane remembers that he's the same guy she saw at Silver Fashion before, the one with the broken lighter. My god, you're real, he says, fascinated. He then asks Jane how well she knew Tommy, causing her to snap since she's already been interviewed at the police station. It doesn't take long before she kicks him out of her house, so Jack steals her car keys, then her car. After a while, Jack stops somewhere and hides Jane's camera under the passenger seat. He then uses a payphone to call Mylon, 
who already knows he stole Jane's car. Unbothered, he quickly explains he only borrowed the vehicle, and asks for an update regarding the number he found at Silver Fashion. After that, he receives an address from Mylon, and he just pleads with Jack to get rid of Jane's car. Next, Jack calls Rayanne and learns that the police have talked to her. His wife is worried and offers to help him in any way, saying she didn't mention the sketch to the cops. The only thing Jack does is ask his wife if she loves him, and when she answers, you know I do, he says I love you back before hanging up. The sketch artist's next stop is the address Mylon gave him. There, Jack tells a woman that he's looking for someone named Brandy, and when the lady replies that she doesn't know anyone by that name, Jack reveals he got that address from Tommy Silver. Hearing that, the woman, Lise, suddenly tries to leave the house, but Jack stops her from doing so and states he's a cop who only wants to ask her a few questions about Tommy. Though she doesn't want to talk to him, Jack learns that Lise knows Tommy. In fact, they're good friends, and when she left, he was still alive. Thing is, Tommy wanted out from the fashion industry, but she agrees with his business manager that he'd be crazy to throw that away. Lise then reveals that Tommy constantly fought with his business manager, Paul, who was skimming millions from him since the man knew he wanted out. Tommy figured he could shake down Paul at the same time. Now, Jack wonders if Paul knew that Tommy was thinking of getting rid of him, but Lise doubts it, for Tommy liked springing secrets on people. With everything that transpired, it may be safe to fully remove Lise and Jane from the list of suspects. The fact that Jane tried to make her way inside Silver Fashion the day after Tommy's death squashed any slim chance that she is, through some weird stroke of coincidence, the killer. Similarly, the number and CD Lise left all pointed to her, so she wouldn't have done that if she planned on killing him right after. So this only leaves Krista, Paul, and Rayanne. Paul and Krista have the strongest motives, but how would Rayanne fit into the picture? With no time to waste, Jack calls Mylon to ask for Paul's address and his blood type. Sadly, Mylon refuses to give that last piece of information to him. That night, Jack drives to Paul's house and falls asleep outside. When he wakes up the next day, he takes the camera from the car and sneaks inside Paul's place. He eventually catches the man having a good time with Krista by the pool and decides to take pictures of them. Once the two leave, he breaks into the house and looks around until he finds Paul's mail, which shows his phone records. Jack then calls Paul to let him know he's in his house before coolly accusing him of killing Tommy. Aside from that, Jack reveals he's seen Paul's phone records and that he knows he'd been making calls to keep track of Daisy's movements before she died. Of course, Jack is aware there's nothing Paul's money can't fix. Realizing what's happening, Paul asks the sketch artist to come to the silver factory at midnight and gives him the address. Afterward, Jack takes the small tape in which their conversation has been recorded. With a few hours left, Jack drives to see Rayanne and even passes by their house, where cops are patrolling. He tells his wife that he needs her help, saying he needs his gun and he can't go home since the police are watching their house. Lastly, Jack gives Rayanne the address of Silver Factory and instructs her to meet him there at 11.45 p.m., promising he'll explain everything later. That night, Jack meets Paul at the factory. Paul reminds him he was in New York the night Tommy was killed, but he admits that Daisy had to go. Half amused, Jack assumes that Paul got to Daisy's apartment before he did, hence why no one was answering. Funny how it all worked out for Paul. In turn, Paul merely says that Tommy got lazy and lost his vision, which he found disappointing. After all, everyone needs to have a vision to keep them going in the right direction. While he's talking, Rayanne suddenly shows up and points a gun at her husband. Paul thanks him for changing the sketch, and seeing Rayanne with Paul, Jack can only chuckle incredulously. We're just surviving. We'd lost it, she says. Rayanne wants Jack to understand that Paul knows what she needs, only to be proven wrong when Jack casually shows her the man's photos with Krista. Rayanne can't believe it. She aims the gun at Paul, but he insists that he did it for them. Naturally, she doesn't believe that he screwed Krista for the two of them. Where's she supposed to fit in that plan? When Paul fails to explain why he slept with Krista, she mercilessly shoots him. As Rayanne points the gun at her husband again, Jack slowly walks toward her and reveals he's the one who designed the earring she lost. They're one of a kind, so the earring the police found can't be anything but hers. At that point, all Rayanne can do is apologize to Jack before trying to shoot herself. But Jack stops her and demands to have the gun. Seeing there's no other way out, Rayanne just gives in and tells Jack she did love him. When the authorities arrive, Jack has a somber look on his face, but he manages to give Mylon a smile. He hands over the tape from Paul's house, and when Mylon offers him a ride, Jack quietly turns him down before leaving. After returning Jane's car, he walks away without looking back. In the end, there's nothing to look back on. After all his bumbling about, spending much of his days carrying the shattered remains of his heart and leaving a mess in his wake, he finally understood Rayanne. He understood that she truly did love him, but she couldn't be satiated. The love stopped being enough until, perhaps, the love stopped entirely too. It's just as Rayanne said, they were just surviving and they lost it. They spent too much of their time just keeping their head above water, going through the motions of life without truly living it and living with each other. Like Tommy, Jack lost his vision and became aimless. But if Rayanne just explained it to him, he would have understood. Jack just needed to know what was going on with them. 
but by the time he started seeking answers, it was too late. His wife had already betrayed him and she had nothing to show for it, seeing as Paul was just using her. Now, Jack's facing a new day. It's anyone's guess if anything will change, if he'll be the man he used to be, if he'll sink deeper into his aimlessness. But that's life. Just like the garbage truck he's walking beside, trash and waste will keep coming in, and it's a matter of gathering them up, throwing them away, and starting anew to do it all again. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.